Guys, you don't know clean until you use tools like this. In this video, I'm gonna tell you the 10 must have tools for interior detailing that will help you master your craft and make that money. Hey everybody, it's Nick from Hawk Pro Detailing, where my goal is to make you a better detailer. For as long as I can remember, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be a better detailer, not like the five-year-old who's like, when I grow up, I wanna clean rims and work on vomit coming out of a, a carpet. Not that way, but there was something captivating about auto detailing, and it all starts with the interior. That's where you're gonna get paid for your first jobs, and that's where the demand will always be. And so. I wanted to create some educational content, and this is called Need 10, hashtag Need 10. Kind of a working title, but I'm gonna talk about 10 things you need in a lot of various aspects of detailing, and where better to start than interior detailing. So in this video, 10 must-have products. I'm talking about tools, I'm not talking about chemicals. I'm not talking about hacks. We're gonna get to the hacks in another video. But 10 tools that you need to kick butt and take names in interior detailing. Product number one, you need a vacuum. Obviously you know this, you're ready to tune out, you're ready to switch channels. Just listen to me folks because I wanna share with you why it's important to have a vacuum. It's like, why do we wear a mask? Because you could be asymptomatic and not know you have COVID and spread it to somebody else. You've been wearing a mask so long, you don't even know why you wear it. You think you know everything about a vacuum, but trust me, this is a big deal, okay? So just bear with me for a second. This rigid vacuum is all you're gonna need. It's not expensive. And what's great about it, it's got this leaf blower attachment on it. So you can use this as an air compressor to blow out a car and you're also gonna get your dry soil removal. I said this before in previous carpet videos, I went to carpet cleaning technician school, that's the nerd that I am. 79% of everything in your car carpet, it's a particulate that's dry, which means it's not going to do anything if you hit it with steam or a chemical. It's not gonna break down, it's gonna turn to mud and when it dries, it's still gonna be in your carpet. I might have butchered that explanation. All I know is get all the dry stuff out of that car before you hit it with steam or a chemical. We're not talking about chemicals in this video. We are talking about the foundation. I love this vacuum. It's got plenty of horsepower. And the fact that you can snap this off and turn it into a leaf blower, which will help you blow some of that stuff out if you're on a budget, it's an amazing investment and it's a great place to start. We're gonna to get to some of the more expensive I would say aspirational tool action later on in this, but I really do want to start with the foundations. And this is one that you might not be hip to just yet. Throw away your black diamond headlamp if you like going camping and you think black diamond is good. Throw away anything else you're using for light. I don't care if it's a strip of light you put in the top of your interior and you think that's giving you good light. Folks, the scan grip headlamp. I use it for paint correction. I use it for interior detailing. We have six of these hanging in the shop and that's because we cannot live without them. I think they're somewhere between 60 and 80 bucks. Sometimes you don't have to overthink the price. You will use this every time you touch a car. I can promise you that, even on a sunny day, you cannot clean what you cannot see. The scan grip headlamp is amazing and I've tried them all. And the only downside of this headlamp is if you beat it up every single day, use it every single day, it might get a little beat up. It might take a little wear and tear. We've had a couple of them fail. I've had a strap fail on one of these. Uh, one of them doesn't take a charge as well, but if you know me and you've seen my previous videos in the past, I wasn't the cleanest guy, but I've come a long way and I certainly have beat up my equipment in the past and certain things we take care of gingerly, certain things do take a beating. This is one of them. Um, so that's my honest review of the Scangrip headlamp. If you're not good to your tools, they're not gonna be good to you. Do what you can to take care of this, but I'd recommend buying one. If you can afford it, buy two. And the reason I want you to buy two is because as you use this, the other one's charging. This takes a charge. It lasts a pretty long time, but if it dies on you and you have one plugged in, whether you're on a mobile job or in your shop, then you have constant lighting. So I, I, it's like you can't clean what you can't see. You gotta vacuum this stuff out. You gotta have light. Two really basic things. I wanna get that out of the way. This is a little bit of a gem if you don't know about the scan grip headlamps. This is really gonna change your life. A lot of guys are scared of the magic eraser, the, the melanine sponge. It's gonna strip the leather. You can't clean leather with that. 
What about tinted windows? Is it going to... Stop, okay? Use the dang magic eraser. It will help you in so many different situations. I'm going to throw one at you. Cleaning windows. The film on the interior windshield. I don't care what fancy window cleaner is out there. I have a process that works exceptionally well. And I'm going to tell you about it right now. So it's going to combine two products, but I'm not cheating. We're talking about two different products here. So yes, you can clean leather. Yes, you can clean those scuff marks on the sides of those plastic doors, on the kick plate. Oh my gosh. Steering wheels, you get in there and like the black on here, you're not going to get it out any other way. Will you damage something? With a bazooka, yeah, you could kill some people. You could take some buildings down. And you can certainly damage stuff with a magic eraser. But if you want results, sometimes you got to bring out the big gun. So magic eraser is insane. I throw some rinseless wash on a magic eraser, your rinseless wash of choice. I hit that interior windshield. And then what do I do next? You have to have the right towel for windows. I'm sure there are other window towels out there. They're certainly branded as window towels, and I've tried a lot of them, and they all suck. Um, the Rag Company, they make this awesome waffle towel. I'm going to put a link to it below. I've used a lot of towels. Here's what I do with my waffle towel. So this is one of those products. This is a big deal, the waffle towel. You hit the interior windshield. After you do the magic eraser with your rinseless wash, you then go in with your waffle towel, and you throw some paint prep, IPA, isopropyl alcohol, G-Technic panel wipe your paint prep from your coating company. You could get isopropyl alcohol, that 70-30 blend from your local drugstore. Whatever it is, that helps so much. So you knock it down with the magic eraser, and then you come in for the rescue with three or four clean waffle towels. Why do I say clean? Because you're just moving that gunk around if you're not working clean. That's why I keep all my waffle towels inside of a bin. The bin is not one of the tools you need. I'm sure you've got one of these around. You can figure it out. Keep your waffles clean. Those are amazing. And if you can, use a fresh magic eraser for windows. And then keep them around. You never know when this is going to help. You could clean crap off of the rubber soles of your shoes. You can clean so many things around the house. Crayons on the wall, scuff marks here or there. These things are amazing. And if you don't want to spend money at your local grocery store, I buy them in bulk from spongeoutlet.com. Not sponsored by Sponge Outlet, um, but they come in bulk. They're just melanin sponges. They come packed up real neat. Couldn't live without the melanin sponges, the magic eraser. So I've talked enough about it, but for interior windshields, if you're trying to get the gunk off, for interior detailing where you cannot fight the gunk on the leather, just know, yeah, you're probably degrading the coating on whatever it is you are cleaning. But if the customer wants it clean, you got to do what you got to do. I hope you're bearing with me here. We'll get to the expensive tools in just a second. But I just want to give you something, that low-hanging fruit that can really help you make interiors look awesome. Couldn't live without our interior detailing brushes. Now, this one's a little firmer. This one's a little softer. You could do this if you're bored. I don't know why you do that. It is rewarding to put your cleaner of choice scrub it up and see the foam, but it's not an aesthetic thing. It is so amazing to have these brushes. I've got a link below. I've done videos about these brushes before, but let's say you just pick one, okay? You can get into cup holders. You can get into edges. You can get into spaces, you know, where you've got headrests and all kinds of rigmarole. Just trust me. These brushes are amazing and they're also so soft that they're safe but it will help you get into little nooks and crannies. It'll help you do broad swaths of leather. It's just an amazing tool to have around. You can switch up your chemical from a heavy hitter all-purpose cleaner to a milder cleaner if you'd like, and this will be the constant. And so uh, my guys in the shop love this. I've loved this. It's one of those very reasonably priced tools that if you're into you know, putting makeup on in your spare time, you could probably use it for that too. So win-win, uh, can't go wrong. Nick, stop talking. Detail brushes, amazing. Trust me on this. And if you hate them, comment below. If you hate me, comment below. The haters seem like they're coming out these days. I'm just trying to help you guys out and you act like I'm uh, Satan incarnate. Anyway, detail brushes are great. Let's move on. The drill brush. I have a very complicated relationship with the drill brush. I used to hate on it, think it was for hacks. What a gimmick, right? I mean, you put a 
brush inside of a drill. There's got to be a better way. Use your arm and elbow grease. Get that brush. Trust me, you guys, this stuff works. Rubber floor mats, carpets. But when I was in carpet cleaning technician school, very proud of that experience. I'm sure my mom was really hoping that I went to carpet cleaning technician school when I was a young child. And so, Mom, I want to thank you for everything. I worked really hard. And, uh, you know, all the glory goes, goes to you. Uh, carpet cleaning technician school taught me CHAT, chemical, heat, agitation, and time. There are four really important factors. Chemical is your detergent, right? Heat, steam, whatever. Heat is really important, especially for carpets, to really clean them well. And then there's the A on chat. It's agitation. Agitation is one huge part of cleaning. No matter how good your chemical is, and you're going to learn this, you're going to think that every person who brands their chemical, it's going to be amazing. It's going to save your entire life, and you'll never have to work hard again. Detailing, folks, it's work. It's hard work. But you will realize, even the best chemicals, you've got to agitate. That's on the outside, on paint, when you're claying, and when you're cleaning leather, whatever. Agitation is important. It's one of those four pillars. And so if you have less chemical, or you have a really weak chemical, if you have no heat, um, then you have to have more of the A, right? They're all like proportional in some way. So uh, you may have times where you really need to agitate a carpet, for instance. And that's why agitation is so important. And then time is your dwell time. So if you have a chemical, like for carpets, that you let sit there for 20 minutes, it's probably going to work better than if it sits there for 30 seconds. Chemical, heat, agitation, time, chat, agitation, man. Rubber floor mats, carpets, this drill brush will save you. And there's a bunch of different attachments you can buy for like 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, and so I will attach a link to that sort of kit down below. Yeah! All right, folks, I thought really long and hard about this. Because I'm going in order of sort of need and price point. Do you need a steamer or a compressor? Obviously, you need both, right? But Air is life. I've heard that said in some of these detailing forums. And so I just want to tell you how important it is to get yourself an air compressor. Now, something with a little bit more horsepower is great. But if your budget is really tight, a pancake compressor is fine. And I want you to get the Tornador attachment. I actually buy the Vortex. It's cheaper. I get it from Autoality. And uh, that's a great distributor, by the way. Um, what's great about the Tornador with air it's meant to lift stuff out with that sort of like tornadic movement of this little contraption. I don't know how to explain it. People use this in the industry, and so just trust me on this. Uh, the pancake compressor will run constantly. It won't power your tornador for very long. But especially if you're mobile or if you're just trying to clean your own dang car because it's COVID and you just got your stimulus check and you really know that cleaning is therapeutic and you spent a lot of money on this car, whatever, man. Everyone loves a clean car. And you'll find out that not everyone loves cleaning them. But if you're that crazy guy in the garage, you're not a pro, and you're just trying to get results, a pancake air compressor is better than nothing. But that's why we did the leaf blower on the amazing vacuum earlier, because at least you can get a little bit of that flavor if you're not able to afford the entree. What does that even mean? I'm not sure. I want you to get a better compressor than this pancake, but this is how I started out. It works well enough, and it's certainly going to save you in a pinch. So yes. Get yourself a compressor and a Tornador or the Vortex. Later on, the Tornador will come through in so many different ways. But for now, blowing dirt out of cars into those cup holders. If you don't have steam, you can use a powerful degreaser in certain spots. That's going to give you more chemical, right? You don't have the heat in chat, right? No steam. But if you have the power to agitate with your brush, that's your A. And if you have the power to get it out of there, which has nothing to do with chat, so why did I even bring that up? At least you can get into all those nooks and crannies, scoop it, blow it, whatever. And if you don't have the heat of the steamer, you can at least use your other tools for the agitation. You can use more chemical, and then you can make sure it's not getting stuck in any of these really expensive, intricate parts of this car by blowing it out. Door jams, carpets, air vents, the list goes on and on. Air is amazing. You need an air compressor. Just trust me on this. There are so many dirty parts in a car that sometimes every tool I've just mentioned won't be enough. The rails under the seats. I mean, talk about a mommy van with cup holders. You've got gum stuck to juice residue on a beautiful layer of coffee that is just totally entrenched. 
and then you take that plastic out of the cup holder, and then you're looking at moldy coffee under, I mean, you need steam, you guys, you gotta have a steamer, I'm telling you. I love the Vapor Chief, or is it the Chief Steamer? I don't remember. Kevin in New York is awesome. Uh, phenomenal customer service. It's gonna come with a bunch of different attachments. I would just say like buy nice or buy twice. Like you can buy the El Cheapo, but if you're gonna detail, and you're gonna do this, like if you're gonna do the damn thing, I'm serious, get a steamer. And if you're just an enthusiast, get a steamer. You'll love it. You can do all kinds of things around your house and clean with it as well. There's no way I'm even getting a commission off giving you a link to this. They don't even sell these on Amazon. I'm just telling you my professional opinion. You need a steamer. It was my first day in auto detailing and I was doing a car, it was like this Dodge Challenger, and then the neighbor next door was like, hey, will you do my car, right? How much do you charge? I'm like, I don't know, 75 bucks for a mommy van inside and out. I was there for three days after that, it was crazy. I couldn't get anything out, and that's when I realized on day one of my career that I needed a steamer. So you'll figure it out soon enough, and if you work so hard, and you are never tired, and you have amazing results, and you don't need a steamer, let me know, like that would be pretty awesome. But um, at some point, if you're gonna do the thing, if you're gonna have a business, there's money that you have to spend. I think everybody thinks, I'm gonna be a detail, I go to Walmart, grab a bucket, a couple chemicals, and a brush, and some towels, and I'm good. You need a steamer if you're gonna get the results that you feel like you should be getting paid for, right? You're getting paid for the service, you're a professional. You've never seen a car as clean as the one you've used compressed air and steam on you can get nearly impeccable results. Oh, also, air vents, little nooks and crannies on foot pedals, like the list, folks, goes on and on, and I could go on and on, but I'm gonna stop there, get a steamer. Nick, would you just shut up already? I get it, you, you think you know something about interior detailing, you're a hack, whatever. Okay, this is actually pretty amazing, and you might not know about it. I'm sure there are a million iterations of this, people have invented a bunch of different things. It's called the Rack Attack Creeper, which is not a creepy name at all. Um, it's gonna save your back. And I think I retrofitted this, or whatever the word is. I put like a bicycle seat on it. Like this thing has seen so many better days. I don't care what it looks like though, because it works. Okay, imagine you take the rubber floor mats out of the car, and you're grinding with your drill brush. You've got your steamer. Your back is killing you, your knees are killing you. Or you could be like a, a prince taking a meeting with Queen Elizabeth. Perfect posture, namaste. Uh, I'm just telling you, you could be on a, on a door. I'm gonna clean the door, I'm gonna get in under the seals, all the door jams. I'm cleaning the carpets, I'm extracting that front seat. Like, I'm just telling you, the rack attack's gonna change your life, it's gonna be amazing. It's super, super nasty looking right now and I don't care because it's comfortable. I don't know how the thing even works, I can roll back and forth, I can move around, I can shake around. Um, I hate extension cords, so if you get extension cords around there and you get stuck, you might swear a little bit, but that's life out on these detailing streets. Get yourself a rack attack or something like this so you don't have to kill your body, even if you're young, even if you don't have any aches or pains. It's not even about that. I'm not gonna be the old crotchety guy saying, you'll regret it later. I'm just telling you, as a lifestyle thing, these people are driving amazing cars it's a lifestyle. It feels great when you're driving down the road and you see an old Toyota Tercel that's about to blow up, right? You've got a ridiculous Porsche. You sleep in a Tempur-Pedic bed because it feels nice. I don't know. If you're going to detail every day, wouldn't it be nice to like not hate your life and have comfortable knee pads and be able to roll around like a little king on his throne? Anyway, the rack attack's great. I highly recommend it slash think you need it. That's why it's very close to the end of the list but I don't know, it's not less important or more important. It's just, it barely made the list. There's a lot of things I could have put on there, but this thing is huge, I highly recommend it. And finally, last but not least, get yourself a hot water extractor. I'm not gonna talk to you about getting this one. Get the Mighty Light 8070. I've done a video about it, it's great. It heats the water up very well in the basin, even if it starts cold. You want hot water in your extractor basin with something that is low pH inside of it. If you want to know more about carpet cleaning, there's a lot to learn. I'm going to link something up above right now that will give you a sense of what I know and I hope that you can learn from that. But you do need a hot water extractor, guys, if you're going to do carpets. Some people never take the hot water extractor out. 
And I don't know how they have a business, but they say they do very well. So like if you're the efficiency guy and you don't care about carpets, whatever. I live in Utah, we have ice melt. It is just so nasty, you get those mommy vans. You get the hose, you start grinding in there and you're just taking all of that gunk out and leaving those nice clean carpets. Get yourself a hot water extractor. I have this for the shop. I could also put a big attachment on it and clean carpets because like for 10 minutes I had a carpet cleaning company with a big wand. It wasn't the greatest thing I've ever done, but I did learn a lot from it. And I realized I'd rather be in a garage, listen to my music in my own space, working on cool cars than I would be in someone's home. Uh, at Carpet Cleaning Technician School, which I keep mentioning, uh, they said, at best, you are a welcome intrusion. At best, you're a welcome intrusion in someone's home. I felt like carpet cleaning was never like that cool, you know? And when you're on cars, you're still treated as the help but I don't know, there's a little bit of a nod to you as a craftsman and someone who's working on something cool. I felt like I just didn't get a lot of respect when I was in people's homes on carpets, which is a surprise to nobody, I'm sure, who's like, why is Nick cleaning carpets? Did you hear Nick has a carpet cleaning company? I think he went insane, but I love cars, so I came back to that. I still love the carpet cleaning knowledge, and so I will tell you, without heat, you're not gonna get the results you want on carpets. Ah! Okay, you guys, 2,000 bucks. Do you need the Brush Pro? I think you do, but I've never had anybody I told that, hey, you need a Brush Pro, actually buy one. They're amazing. This thing has brushes on it. It's like 1,000 pounds. You can do bed liners of trucks. You can do giant swaths of carpet in the back of an SUV or a van. You never know when this is going to work. I love it on rubber floor mats. It's just so heavy and the brushes continue to move that it does all the work for you. And you can also clean your home carpets. It's meant for the carpet cleaning world. It's phenomenal. It has trays you can put on there to whip up dog hair and it almost treats it like a vacuum because it catches all the dirt in these trays. Anyway, carpet cleaning gem for 2000 bucks if you want to spend money. Great. If not, you don't need it. That's why it's not on the list. But I do absolutely love the Brush Pro. If I did 15, this would have been on there. Air mover, you gotta get those carpets dry as quickly as you can. The reason it's on the list is, for better or for worse, you can run the heat in the customer's car, keep the car running, and the heat will dry the car for you. You might be in a warm weather environment on a mobile job where the carpets dry fast anyway. Air movers are amazing. They, in a very concentrated way, dry those carpets for you when you get them wet from the hot water extraction. Okay guys. Need 10, what do you think of this series? I'm just trying to help you all out. 10 products that you need for auto detailing. On the interior side, that's coming next. Those products are the chemicals. That good, good. But I started with 10 tools you need. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you want to support the channel. If you like any of these products, I'm gonna have links below, small commish, and yeah. Thanks for watching. Nick from Hawkboard Detailing, where my goal is to make you a better detailer.